Hello and welcome back to the second part of Camera Raw for beginners. Um, basically this one I'm going to show you what these tabs do on the top left hand side of the screen of Camera Raw. Part 1 we did the sliders use on the right hand side. Part 2 is the tabs on the top left. Part 3 will show you the tabs on the right hand side and then part 4 we're going to create an image throughout Camera Raw using all or as many as we can uh, to show you them all actively in use. So let's start by going over to these two tabs here. The first one is the zoom tool which is quite straightforward. All you've got to do is click on it and zoom in. If you want a, uh, a desired area that you want to zoom in on then basically if you left click your mouse button hold it down and select and drag over the area that you want to zoom in on then that's fine you can do that then release the left mouse button and it'll zoom in on that area itself that's where the hand tool kicks into play if you want to maneuver and move to the left or right or up or down so let's say we want to see more of this foot down here click onto the hand tool a hand will appear left click it'll clinch your fist and it's all in the picture and you can move the image wherever you want on your screen at that desired zoom to get out of this there's three ways you can do it you can click on the minus on the bottom left you can open the box and you can pick a percentage that you want to zoom into or you can get out of it completely by going fit in view and that will take you back to the opening image itself moving along to the white balance tool fantastic bit of tool that's been created in raw it's more powerful than the white balance on the right hand side where it gives you the camera settings in there that's more or less like an automatic mode this is what your fine tuning mode will do two things can go wrong with it first one if you select um, an image that's got like yellow or dark in it well the white balance will correct itself to what you're choosing from so it can basically uh, distort or give a cast of a colour over the image in a whole itself the second problem that can go wrong with it is if you hit or click on a overexposure within the image then it will not be able to correct the white balance because it will be too bright for it an error box will come up all you've got to do click OK and pick another point and that will resolve that no problem at all the reason why this is a blue landscape is because I've done it just for this tutorial um, basically it, I've set it to tungsten to show you the power of this white balance tool it's a fantastic tool so what I'm going to do is pick a white area within the image itself in this case it's this bit here once you left click on it if you watch carefully now the whole image should hopefully change and balance the picture out with the whole of the white balance so I'm going to left click on that area and there you go voila simple as that very very powerful tool indeed but it will correct the whole of the white balance throughout the image no problem whatsoever moving along we're on the color sampler tool basically what this is is it's got nine points where you can click on the image wherever you wish I'm just going to do the four corners just to show you um, and it gives you one two three four points and it will give you the color on the RGB within each one of them points and basically what well, that is when you go into Photoshop if you write them down or do whatever you want you can manipulate and get the color all the same or whatever I don't use it but it's the and that's what it's for so I'm going to clear that next one is the targeted adjustment tool very powerful tool absolutely fantastic um, basically what it does is it does what it says it is it will target an area what you select and you can manipulate that area by choosing by right clicking let's say we're going to do the sky so if I want to change this blue here I'm going to right click on the image and the box will open when you are on the box you've got all these which is the curve the U the saturation luminance and the grayscale mix basically I'm going to saturate sky so I'm going to click on saturate pick an area of the sky let's go here left click but holding the left mouse button down move your slider up or down and as you can see on the right hand side of the screen it's moving the blues and the aquas 
on that to give you more saturation within the sky. If you want to do the uh, sand, I've done it extreme. If you watch the cursors of the orange, click onto the orange, there you go, and as pale or as bright as you want. Though that's targeting the orange and the yellows throughout the image, not on a section, it's throughout the image. So remember that. The blues will select that and vice versa, it depends on where you click on the image itself. So if you just left click on the target area, you can move that up and down. Not a problem at all. You can change the settings by right clicking again. Uh, luminance does a bit of brighter, a bit more brightness for the colours itself. Um, so if I wanted the sky to be a bit brighter, I can do that and it will fine tune the skies itself. Um, the U obviously will do that as well, change the, the U within the sky. Remember if you notice I'm just using the sky slider just to show you and the bottom of the picture isn't changing at all. So that that's what that target uh, tool does, really really good. Grayscale basically turns your image black and white, pick a selected area and it will either brighten it or darken it. If you want the saturation you can do the same on that but obviously it will revert from the converted grayscale back to the colour as soon as you right click on any of them. So basically that's a powerful tool, it's a really good tool to have um, but it is um, very fine tweaking so be careful with it. Um, crop tool says what it is, as soon as you click it a box will open up, you can grab on either the corner to corner or just fine tweak it yourself with uh, moving the uh, sliders left or right up and down corner to corner once you've selected the image and you want it to crop it just press enter or return and it will take the image and cut the image no problem whatsoever next one is your straighten tool this will straighten if you've got your horizons that are just slightly off this will straighten it within RAW itself I like doing it in Photoshop but um, if it's there, it is there to help you. So all you do is you left click on the corner, drag it across the horizon, just pull it below for instance, and then let go. Now you might think nothing's happened, but if you look now, the crop tools come back into play because what it's doing is we've selected the image and now it's going to crop the image to straighten it out. So if you press return or enter, it will cut it yet again. So be aware that when you do that, it's going to take some of your image off. So if you use it more in Photoshop, you've got a little bit more maneuverability with it. On this, it's like a bit brutal. That's it, and that's what it is. If you don't like it, if you notice at the top, you've got no um, redo or undo buttons, right? And a lot of I know that there's a lot of people that's familiarised with Camera Raw that doesn't know this. I do know that for a fact. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to undo, and it will take you back from the last preset what you did within camera raw very simple press control the alt and the letter z and it will take you back to where you left off from and if you don't believe me i'm just going to go back into the white balance go back to tungsten just for video sake control halt and the letter z and there you go it takes you straight back and it's used as your undo button so that's important so if you make a mistake don't panic just use them three keys and it'll take you back to your preset where you've just made your last adjustment from. Really, really good. Good tip for everybody then. Um, going along now, you've got your spot removal tool. I'm going to show you this a bit in depth. I'm going to select this area here. Now, these are three little black marks, and you want to get rid of them. So basically what you do is you pick your spot removal tool. You can set the radius of the, uh, the brush size, which is the circle here and put the opacity on 100%. If you notice, it's got the type as heel. If you hit the bottom, you can clone as well. So you can clone it and heel it. I'm just going to show you the heel because it will do the same thing. So basically what I'm going to do is click on this here by left clicking. As soon as you left click, a red box will go. That's your target area. Beside it, you'll have a green circle. That's your selective area where you're going to choose. If you left click in the center of that and hold it down, it will go anywhere you want it to over the image. For this, I'm just going to pick this area here because it's clear. And there you go. And if you want to do it again, click onto that yet again. There. And again. 
and that's it. That's as simple as that. Um, once you've done that, go back to your Zoom, go to Fit in View, they're gone, and the process is, is complete. That's what that does. Um, the red eye is, I'm not going to be able to show you on this, but I can show you the sliders. Basically what the red eye does is you target it by, with a cross on that, is you can select the middle of the pupil, you can move the slider up and down for the pupil size, and is at your will to move how dark you want the pupil and it will eliminate your red eye on your capture. Next one along is your adjustment brush. This is a very, 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 very powerful tool indeed. I'm just going to reduce the brush size on this just a little bit. Now I've put this all to zero because um, I don't want it to um, have settings to uh, overexpose anything at the moment because I want to show you what it's used for and I've set the colour to neutral uh, I'll show you that in a second so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to brighten up these dark areas within the rocks here so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over by holding the mouse button down and going over sweeping down just like that now as you can see once you let go you'll see a little green circle up here if you go over that circle that will highlight where you've painted on that image itself so now this is where the tools and the sliders come along on the right hand side so now I can adjust the exposure so I can have it as bright as I want or as dark as I want so this one will make it a little bit darker not much I can adjust the brightness slightly the contrast give it a bit of a punch saturation a bit more color in it and the clarity I can move that up as well sharpness uh, flow and the feather and the density of it is all to your choices um, and basically if I wanted the color change I can click on the color and choose the color that I want and that's what it'll be for this I'm just going to cancel out I don't want to do that if you want to do some more fine-tuning on let's say the sky for instance click on the new and I'm just going to zero all this again because I don't want them effects to take on the sky so basically what I'm going to do is now I'm going to increase the size of the, the brush and paint over the sky and yet again I can manipulate how dark I want it, how bright I want it um, I can give it more contrast, I can give it more clarity um, more sharpness um, and more saturation and that's just by using that, it's a really powerful tool as you highlight it, it'll show you where I've painted over it by putting the cross on the green circle and that'll show you where, where you've worked on the image itself. Uh, click on new all the time, zero it so you're not manipulating uh, the photos itself where um, you gain the same um, settings as what it is on the sky because you might want completely different to what you've done on the sky. So with that, use that. I'm going to paint over the sand just like that. I'm being as quick as I can so it's really rough and then I can again manipulate either the exposure, the brightness, the contrast and even the saturation if I wanted to see and it's not touching the rest of the image because you're targeting the um, area yourself what you want to do move up the clarity just a punch and that's it and you've got one, two, three points by using that tool and the adjustment brush is a fantastic way of doing it um, but also you've got to be careful with it as well never forget to go to new and reset your um, exposure levels and brightness levels and that put them all to zero and make sure that your color box is set to white to get that basically all you do is click onto the box and go down to the furthest point away on the white click OK and it, it'll just give you a white and that's it Following on is the graduated filter tool, which is absolutely brilliant. And what that will do is it will allow you to manipulate the sky as you would a graduated filter when you're shooting a landscape. Um, with this, you can manipulate it if you, if you manipulate it if you didn't have a, a grad filter there with you. Uh, what a grad filter is is quite simple. It's dark at the top and uh, light at the bottom and it gradually uh, goes from dark to light all the way down and this is the same within Photoshop itself so what I'm going to do is select the top drag it down the green is the start point the red is the end point just over the filter 
which is like that. As you can see, the uh, color's not been selected, but I can darken or, or lighten the exposure and the brightness and the contrast and saturation within this as well. So it's a, another powerful tool for, for any images itself that you want to use. If you want to change the sky now, click on the box, go on to the blues, or can even have a red sky, or a green sky, or an orange, or wherever it is that you'd like. With that, I'm just going to leave it on that, just for the video, I'll show you that. Now, as you can see, it's it's over that the orange is hitting the rock, so it's not looking as white as it should. So what I'm going to do is hold on to the uh, green line at the top, and just drag it right up. So it just pinches into the top of the sky, and it takes it away from them rocks. And you can hold it down, you can bring it down just a little bit more with that. You can add another filter by clicking onto new, picking another select point and going down, change the colour on that. So let's say, I don't know, magenta. Yeah. And pull that up slightly and it just comes in the top top play of that. And basically that's what that does. It's as simple as that. You can uh, brighten it up slightly so it's not overpowering. Take the brightness away, saturation down, whatever you want to do. It, it's the for... for what needs you need it's a really good tool to have so that's the um graduated filter next one along is the preferences dialog box that just gives you what it says it is the preferences to the uh, settings that you've set up within camera raw uh, and the last two are the rotation one for clockwise one for anti-clockwise and all they do is basically turn your picture all the way around like so and basically that's it. So there you go. I hope them um, icons have explained a bit to you. And I hope that um, you're going to start shooting a little bit more in RAW and not be frightened of it. If you do like the tutorial, please give me a like. If you don't, then give me a thumbs down. That's fine. I'll learn from you guys as well. So I appreciate any comments that you all say as well. In part three of Camera Raw now, what I'm going to do is we're going to run through the tabs on the right hand side and I'm going to explain and how you can manipulate an image by using these and I'll show you some little tips and good tricks with them as well so for now thanks for watching hope you enjoy the video until part three bye bye